Okay, hello folks, this is Adam Benson here. Um, I'm doing this tutorial for 3D World to uh, hopefully demonstrate the animation uh, and walk cycle of a spider model. Um, the model itself is one that I've created in ZBrush. Um, it's not as low poly as I would have ideally liked. Uh, it, this comes in around 10,000 polys, 10k. Um, I was originally starting to use the 2.5k version of it, but uh, the displacement map when it was coming through didn't provide enough depth and detail where I wanted it, uh, i.e. here on the legs, at the uh, junctions of the legs, which uh, is further emphasised by the, the uh, displacement. But uh, I needed to bring a slightly higher poly model in to get a decent start for the, displ the displacement to work on. Um, so anyway, it's not causing me any problems in terms of... Uh, motion and movement, it's not slowing down the system, hopefully it won't uh, slow yours down at all either. Um, as you can see uh, I've rigged this completely using Cinemar's native rigging tools um, and also uh, added IK for more realistic or better motion hopefully, certainly it should make it easier. Um, I've created a whole bunch of controllers which uh, allow us to quickly select and add keyframes to the various legs or whatever, we just keyframe the motions on these rather than having to add it anywhere else. Um, and to make that even easier, I've created shortcuts to these controllers on the HUD, or heads up display, um, which again, make it a lot easier to select the uh, specific limb you want to move. Equally, you can just click onto the, the object itself and that will allow you to uh, start moving things around. So uh, as well as the uh, legs I have created additional controls for the abdomen which just adds a nice bit of secondary motion you know whether that's going to be a little bit of a bobble when it walks along um, or whether we want to use it for additional poses I don't know um, but it's good to have. Additionally uh, I've created controls for the mandibles so we can uh, pose those any way we like um, and they're fully arcade as well so we've only got to move the tip um, and finally uh, in the IK realm I added a body crouch that's what I've called it which uh, allows the spider rig to be moved up and down in its entirety so the very nature of IK allows the feet to stay where they should be placed on the floor and it allows a spider to rise up and down. Um, the only uh, obvious problem with that is the fact that the uh, abdomen tip and the mandible tips stay exactly where they are. Um, for the abdomen I don't mind this at all actually, I think that's quite quite realistic. I think if the spider was going to duck down in that manner its abdomen might still rise up. Um, for the mandibles however I have created a switch to turn the IK off and revert to FK which again could be animated in itself if we just wanted to create a bit of movement that way. Um, but it does allow us to lift the entire rig up or move it around and have those not be affected by that motion. Right, let me just revert this to saved. Right, okay, so the whole rig, is, oh that's the additional thing as well. On the mandibles um, I created a little retract using the IK goal um, offset which uh, is quite nice, that'll add a little bit of additional movement when the spider's walking along. Okay, so it's all good to go. The aim of this tutorial is to obviously create a walk cycle, um, but then also to use Cinema's motion tools, um, which uh, the motion mode here allows you to blend various motions together so we can create a, uh, a walk cycle or in fact drag several walk cycles onto different layers and have them moving at different speeds and have it all blend together to create hopefully a more realistic sense of motion. Um, additionally I will probably have the spider stop, um, crouch down and ri uh, raise its front legs in a kind of threatening or defensive posture if possible. Okay so we can start actually getting this thing to move now, put a few keyframes in. Just going to make the uh, rig invisible so that's not clogging up our view and I'm going to switch to a top view and also switch to shaded so that uh, I'm not 
confused any more than I already am by the, uh, the mesh and we can start adding some keyframes. The first thing I'm going to do is consult some reference and I've used YouTube for this um, just did a simple search for spider walking uh, and it's come up with a few different things, it's actually come up with a few CG walk cycles that have already been done um, as well as the, the live action thing um, and some of the CG ones, some are okay, some uh, seem quite wrong to me so I'm not actually using those as reference um, but uh, this has proved to be quite a good one. Um, you get quite a good sense of the spider's motion. Uh, and I've been watching it a few times. Um, and at first, getting a little bit confused by the synchronization of the legs and, and working out exactly what the pattern is. Um, particularly as it rotates around and it speeds up, and you start sort of losing the track of the actual pattern. But uh, I've realized through watching it that uh, four uh, are in unison or all eight are in unison but four are going forwards four are going backwards at the same time uh, and they go in a kind of diagonal opposing each other for example your front left and your back right are all in sync uh, your front right back left are in sync so whenever the forward one is fo uh, moving forward the opposing rear is also moving back at the same time or forward at the same time. So that's quite useful. I'm going to be going back to that quite often, I think, just to uh, clear up what we're doing as we go along. So the first thing I'm going to do is find a kind of, well, the first thing, in fact, I'm going to do is save a default pose because that way we can go back to zero if we get into any mess later on with the rig and all the uh, controls will be in the position they're in now so I'm going to put a keyframe um, using the move and the parameter controls but not rotate and scale because they're not applicable for what we're doing um, so I'm just going to keyframe for each of those um, and now we have a decent default starting position Okay, so what we need to do is have, because we need to find the average point between these two, or the closest point between these two legs, um, what I need to do is move these both back, or one back, one forward, to find out where would be a good point for the motion. So what I'm doing here, let me just put that back. What I'm doing is moving it along the uh, z-axis but what I'm doing is when I click and move I start to move in the direction then hold down shift and then I can constrain it to increments of 10 which is quite useful so looking at that I think maybe I'm going to go with 60 um, I'll leave that like that let's go to the uh, left 3 and then move that forward 60 if we go over 70 on both, let's try the left two. Yeah, that looks alright. I think that's close enough. Right, I'm going to keyframe that one and keyframe. I'm not going to move that one again now. The left three. Move that forward 70 and keyframe. So, so we're moving in increments of 70. I may go back and actually make that a little bit further. I may even manage to get it to 80. But I think that'll do for now. <coughs> right, back to uh, frame 10. The front left leg needs to be reaching forward. So, uh, front. Start moving it. I'm going to go forward 70 the keyframe and the right left sorry the left rear left four needs to be back so that needs to go there keyframe that it's just it seems to be right 
and then I need to do the opposite side and the front right is moved back by 70 confirm that and the, uh, the rear right which is right 4 will be forward I'm hoping I remember this right uh, yeah and then the second right will also be forward 70 and the third right will be back by 70 that's right that's it so basically what you're getting there is a synchronization across um, diagonals really uh, that works quite well. Obviously at the moment the legs are only moving forward sliding on the floor and what we've got to actually have them doing is moving forward or lifting up moving forward sliding back uh, and so on. So but that's fine so what I'm going to do there is uh, then create that so I've done that at frame 10 so that's fine so at frame 20 I'm going to create the opposite. So uh, starting where we left off I'm now going to move that 100 and 40 uh, right to control that wants to come back 140 um, okay let's go over to uh, this one that needs to be forward 140 that one needs to move back uh, that one needs to move forward using the constraint really does help to uh, lock yourself into specific distances I've got to move these outer ones and then 40 that one and then what we should get now if we do it right that's it already looking quite spider like so we just need to create some up and down motion on those as well so what I'm going to do is uh, have 10 as my starting position 20 as the midpoint and then obviously 30 would be whether I'll put that together so I can uh, copy the keyframes from uh, frame 10 to frame 30 and then that should give us and then all I've got to do is create the up and down motion of the legs now. What I'm going to do actually is, is move these back and I'm going to take the zeroed out position and stick it before time begins to there so it's not interfering with our animation and then I'm going to move all these onto zero. Uh, and in actual fact what I'm going to do is stretch these out and work on a 30, a full 30 frame sequence. That might be easier, might be a bit slow, but it, at least it'll be a, a good number to work to. So basically, if I um, alter the project settings to 30 now and play. And we should be getting something that resembles, albeit without any lift, a skating spider. Which is cool. Looks like a fairly uh, laid back spider that's not in any hurry to go anywhere at the moment. But uh, that will change. What I've actually noticed while looking at the reference again, um, 
is that the the legs the the front pair and the rear pair are actually a little bit closer to the body um, than I've actually modeled them because the way I've laid them out in ZBrush um, I've kind of splayed them out but in fact the certainly the front pair should be a little bit more alongside the head so it's reaching forward pulling itself forward whereas at the moment they're a little bit splayed apart so what I'm actually going to do there is um, alter these keyframes so that I move because there's plenty of movement in the leg the rig won't fall apart so what I'm going to do is move them across I might as well use 70 again so it's, it's the, the measurement we're working with um, and I'm going to position them that one there and then at 15 I'm going to move it across to 70 again and obviously at 30 again, 70 and then hopefully we're creating a Got a bit of an odd curve going on there, but I think uh, what is that that I'm looking at? Let's have a look. Sure. Well, maybe something to do with the motion curves actually, which is. Uh, I shall edit out. I think that looks like it's a little bit more forward rather than splayed, which is preferable. It looks more like the reference anyway. So what I will do as well then is uh, equally uh, use the right front, move that across 70 keyframe, do the same actually there, 70 keyframe, 15, oops, let me constrain it, keyframe, so now they're moving more forward and backward rather than side to side, and the back ones it looks like he's uh, Obviously we've got to fit around the abdomen, but uh, let's see if we can get those a little bit close together as well. Let's go back on that. So I'm inclined to go a bit further and it's cutting into the abdomen. I think 70 might be our limit on that. Let's just move that to there. About 70 again, and then on the mid frame. See if that's really affecting the abdomen. It's close. I don't know whether the displacement is going to push that. I think the displacement is probably going to pull that in actually, but we'll have to see. That might be a problem. Um, I may even have to realign the the bones a little bit on that. But uh, it definitely looks a little bit more natural, I think, in terms of the splay. So let's do the last one, which is that. Move that across 70. Oops. And then all the way to the end, same again. And then middle frame. See how that looks. Apart from the little wiggle that's going on, which is down to the F curves, that looks about right to me. Let's get it going and have a look at it in the uh, perspective viewpoint. Again, it still looks a bit laid back and uh, not in any particular hurry. But I think once we start putting a little bit of up and down motion in the legs, it should look a lot better. 
Right, first thing I'm going to do before I add a little bit of up-down movement is um, go into the F-curves. Whoa, what a pretty pattern. And uh, ditch the, um, the curve on the X movement, which is what I, when, I, when I move the legs across um, out of the default position. Uh, we've got a curve there which we do not want. So, as you can see, and it's exaggerated somewhat. That's not good. So, I'm just going to uh, give that a linear. What am I doing? There we go. Uh, linear, and that will get rid of that wobble. And the same. Should have dealt with that. Let's have a look. Yeah, nice clean forward backwards movement. So I need to do the same for the rear legs. So that's right four. Uh, I just want the X. So we can just zero out that one. Okay. And then the same with left four. Oops, time. There we go. And all. Linear. So we'll go to the top viewpoint, then we should see a nice straightforward movement with no fluctuation. That's great. <coughs> Okay, so now what we can do, um, I'm just going to save it, and go back to uh, perspective viewpoint, I think, and I need to add some up-down motion. As the spider moves forward, obviously, the same with anything else that walks, um, it raises its leg up to gain purchase and then retracts it back to uh, to move it propel it forward so basically on the outward forward motion of the legs they need to raise up so at the position that's at now we're starting it there it's pulling it back halfway through that point there between 15 and 30 it needs to be raised in the air, so 23 seems like a good figure. So I need to make a keyframe. We'll get 140. And add a Y motion. Still some curves in there, which I probably need to iron out, but for now I'm going to leave that as it is. Um, move to the front right. And that will be coming forward at 7, I think. So we raise that up 140. Let's just make that run. That's more like it. It's got a bit more of a sense of walking now. It's quite cool. So what I've noticed when I've been looking at the reference again is that the the front legs have a definite higher lift. I mean, the thing is, this is not exactly the same kind of body shape as a spider I've done. I've kind of done something which is a bit more black widow cross tarantula, like a hybrid, whereas this is, I think, something a little more in the tarantula family. It's certainly lower to the ground. Um, it doesn't raise its legs, as, or they're not as long as something which I've modelled this on, Black Widow, which has far longer. Certainly um, the uh, initial joints are quite longer limbed. Um, but nevertheless, if you look at that, the front two legs definitely raise off the ground more. The second two look like they raise up not as far. The back two only lift as much off the ground as is necessary to move it along. And the back ones almost drag. 
they do actually lift off the floor I think but it's only a fraction so with that in mind um, I think we we may end up lifting the front two legs a bit further up or I might add that as a secondary pose uh, like it's a bit more cautious um, but certainly we need to uh, add some up down motion to the other legs so let's see where we are right back at zero the front right leg is moving forward and lifting therefore the other legs in that sequence which would appear to be that one will also be lifting so at the halfway marker which will be seven I lifted the front legs 140 I'm going to lift these or well that one 70 go halfway Yeah, that looks about right. Yeah. And then 23. The next leg here will be raised up. So I'm going to make that. Let's see, we normally do 140 for the front, 70 for the rear. So let's go sort of in between. We'll go at 100 for those. See how that works. Actually, I think I'm going to raise it up a little bit more. Oops. Let's get 120. And re reframe that. And I probably will end up lifting the front ones up even more. I think I want them quite like they're reaching out, lifting out more. Um, but let's do the back one in that same sequence. So that, 23, raise up. And what I'm going to do on that one, I'll keep it easy, I'm just going to keep that at 70. So then the back two are lifting up from 70, the front pair are at 140, and the second leg is doing 100, or 120, sorry. Oh, I need to keep a memory of where all these are because I've got to do it on the other side now. Okay. Rotate it around. So, zero position. Okay, so this one needs to raise up, and that's the hundred and twenty one. So is that one, that's 70, the same keyframe, and then this one, so 70 on frame 23, if I'm right I think we're all in, we're all in motion now, all lifting. Still feel inclined. I may well. I am going to move the front two legs up, but I actually might make them reach a bit further as well. I kind of feel like it should go a little bit, um, a little bit longer stride. But then again, I don't know. It's got very long legs. Um, I don't want to end up making it look silly. I think when it's going a bit faster, it will make a difference as well. But what I shall have to do. And the next video is go through and sort out all the curves. Okay, um, what I've just done actually um, 
is uh, I've lowered the two rear legs down to a height of 50 because um, I was conscious in the reference of them almost dragging and although again this is a different body shape its legs are longer uh, I still don't think they should come up too high so at the moment you can kind of see a stepped progress between all the legs like the, the, the front ones definitely raise up higher the next ones are just a little bit lower and so on what I've also noticed obviously is again F curves uh, lovely as they are are causing the feet to go below the floor on the wide movement so that needs sorting out as well so uh, again in to F curves and on Y on all of the leg movements let's frame it yeah where it's going down there that's actually dipping below the surface so um, we might we could do it there as well. We might need we might be able to zero it. Can we do that? Yes. Well, at least we still have a little bit of the curve as it raises up and down again. But it doesn't go below the surface, which is what we want. And uh, the same there. We want that zeroed uh, F3 Y zero where is it? Zero angle Y3 position Y do the same with both of those Same on that one. Zero angle. F2 position. Y. Both of those. Zero angle. Come on. And then it's even worse. Key. Zero angle. And then both of those. Zero angle. Let's switch back to the key editor and then hopefully. Yes, they're all staying on the zero on the ground, which is cool. I'm trying to work out really is uh, from the reference whether the distance travelled by each of the legs is absolutely the same relative to each other or it certainly looks that way I mean it would make sense logically but I was trying to work out whether there's a little bit more reach in the front legs and therefore more motion or more distance covered than the side legs I don't think there is certainly not on the spider on this reference because of the again the body shape you know that's probably down to my error in the modeling really I didn't I didn't refer to any reference when I was modeling it which I probably should have done but I just feel like those front legs are under reaching there's an awful lot of length in those legs that's not being used which uh, seems a bit of a shame what I'm going to try and do is at frame 15 actually move them further forward so we know they're 140. So what about if I take them to what is essentially oops what is essentially 200. 
So that looks like a bit of a nicer stretch. So the motion goes from there to there. Yeah, that's not far enough. Um, okay, let's add another 70. And then the same. So that, move forward another 70 point. Yeah, we've got a pop going on there. Because it doesn't start as far forward in the beginning, so I need to move that another 70. Feels like it's actually reaching forward more now. I don't think it makes the animation suffer in any other way. Those are actually uh, propelling it a little bit further forward, but it doesn't look incongruous, if that's the right word. The rest of it, I may actually stretch the back ones out as well. Okay, but let's leave it there for now. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to extend the uh, rear legs out as well. Um, I've obviously just added an extra bit of distance to the uh, front legs. So, left full. So we are, yeah, I'm going to stretch it back a bit further. Again, I, the problem is with this, I think we're going to have, is that it's going to obviously have that part of the leg colliding with the abdomen. Um, and it, I definitely think it needs a bit of that extra distance on the leg. So what I might have to do is, um, is uh, take the, actually squeeze the abdomen of the model a little bit, make it a little bit a bit slimmer, uh, which I think I can do okay without causing too many problems. I shall see how it works with the displacement map. <clears throat> but uh, for the time being, what I'm going to do is move these back anyway. Um, go back another 70. And then the same with that one. to move that one back 70 again otherwise it pops moved so we'll look and see what it looks like in the 3D viewport <clears throat> Yeah, I certainly feel happy with those legs stretching a bit more than they did previously. Let's just see what it looks like on the abdomen. Yeah, it's brushing through it. Until I get the displacement map on there, I'm not going to know whether that is going to be a real problem or not. I think I might have to squeeze the model to make that work. Because I want that stretch in there. Uh, 
And the other thing I'm going to do is raise the raise the legs. Halfway point. I think they're currently at 140, but I think I'm going to take them to. maybe yeah that's kind of cool um, so 23 one let's go up another 40 just make sure that's correct yes yeah obviously I'm gonna have to straighten out the F curves again <coughs> Do that now. Uh, front right, Y. There we go. Let's just straighten that out. Key zero angle. And okay. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, I think that's quite good. I think essentially what we've got there is our walk cycle. Um, I think the only thing though we do need to add to that, just save that, <coughs> is a bit of secondary motion. So I'm going to refer back to the reference again. Fine, I've just done with it. There we go. Okay, let's have a look at that and see if we can work out what happens. So there's definitely a bit of side to side. So as the rear leg comes back, whatever side that's on the abdomen is pushed a little bit the other way, which makes sense. In fact, I may even be able to avoid the abdomen by that motion in itself. And stopping the intersection. It's job to tell whether the whole body moves up and down the abdomen does. Which is good. That's why I added the abdomen tip. And let's just look at that again. I just want to work out where it's actually happening. Okay, it looks like the abdomen is dipped when the leg, leg is down, which again it makes sense, it's raising it slightly. So it's there. Does it do it twice? It must do it twice. So, what we'll do is we'll take the mid position, which is there, lift the abdomen up touch. Let's make it 20, see if that works. And then at zero. Actually, what I need to do is do that again, because it's zero. <coughs> I need to uh, maybe lower it 10. Seven. I'm going to raise it ten. And we get a twenty movement. Might not be quite enough. And at fifteen, I'm going to lower it ten. I'm going to lower it twenty. I do it now. So now we're at ten. It's a little bit too subtle. So 
So I think what we'll do at that point is raise it another 10. Take it another ten in fact. That's about right. Yeah, that seems about right. I'm gonna to have to put a bit of sideways movement in as well. But that will certainly do that. So what we can do is go into the timeline. Close up these that we're not looking at right now. Go on to abdomen tip position Y. <clears throat> and then we need to copy this one to 23. And this one to. Ooh. So let's get a bit of sideways motion in there as well. At that point, because it moves out the way, I'm going to put it there. Move that 20. A um, bit of nice bit of booty shaking there. Let's just click off the controller. See, it looks like we've avoided the limb there, which is pretty good. Oh no, we've got a little bit of intersection. kind of working for me so the other thing we need to add is um, let's say that we need to add also is some movement of the uh, mandibles or feelers or whatever they are I'm going to consult the reference again I mean, on this particular spider as well, the uh, mandibles or feelers, front legs, whatever they are, the arm things, I should know what they're called really, shouldn't I? Um, they are reaching and actually touching the surface of the ground, um, but obviously again, a longer legged spider, they wouldn't be able to do that. So we have to kind of guess about how they might move. Um, The other thing is I might do, if I can, is add a little bit of the crouch. A bit of bobble in the up and down motion of it. As it walks as well. Okay, so what we will do now, I think, as well as the little bit of abdomen bobble, is we'll have the whole rig 
bouncing just a little bit, um, which I think would be a little bit more authentic because it does look a little bit rigid as it is. So what I'm going to do is have it when the abdomen is up at seven. I think I'm going to drop the rig a little bit. So I'll put a keyframe at zero. Just there, and then at seven, when the abdomen's up, I'm going to lower the rig. No, what am I doing? Did that on the abdomen tip. I shouldn't have done. It should be the body crouch. Okay, so that's at zero, and then at seven, I'm going to lower. Just 10, let's see what that looks like. Uh, and then back at 15, they want to come up. 10. I think that's probably enough actually. <clears throat> so, timeline, um, body crouch, Oops. come on, okay, what we're going to do is take the keyframe there, copy that to there, copy that to there, and then have a look. kind of works I think the downward movement of the body sort of creates that kind of bobble in the abdomen it seems to work because the motions are opposing each other um, yeah I think that's okay i to work out what to do with the uh, mandibles. Um, obviously at the moment they're with full FK on, uh, IK on. I'm going to take them on. Let's put them in FK. Or I could just put them in halfway. So they're kind of moving. Yeah, that's quite nice really because then we're getting a bit of independent motion if I just didn't animate that as it goes along actually what I won't I won't do that on this pass I'll do that as a uh, a motion layer so I can apply it as and when and keep the walk cycle quite clean I think You see it speeded up, but that's quite good. Okay, I'm going to save that, and uh, I'm just going to pull out a bit, go above. Might be a little bit too much motion in the abdomen, really, but um, I don't know. Quite, quite nice to overplay it just a tad. just watching the motion to make sure that I don't need to do twice the amount of bobbing on the body. No, that's right. 
I mean, I suppose I could actually have a little bit of of other kind of uh, motion in the body. I could actually sway it just a little bit, but I don't know that that would make sense. I think they're fairly equally. I think the abdomen does enough of that kind of motion. Okay, so I think really what we've got there is our completed walk cycle. Which means the first part of this tutorial and ultimately this animation is complete. And we'll move on next to creating more specific poses like uh, the spider maybe stopping and rearing up. Crouching down. Um, and then maybe create some motion clips from all of these, as well as one that will create random movement in the mandibles. I think that should be quite cool.